Hi, welcome to Seen and Heard. I'm Melia or Melia, depende del idioma. Uh, ben Susan, your artistic director. Really delighted that you're here to learn a little bit more about our next offering in this, our 60th anniversary season. Um, I am delighted that here at my side, my virtual side, is the extraordinary Michael Wilson. So Michael is here for our second production of this anniversary season, helming the inimitable one and only A Christmas Carol, A Ghost Story of Christmas that Michael brought as a gift to this theater. Michael, welcome home. Thank you, Melia. Welcome back. It really, it's very moving to me that you're here. And here we are finally, I know um, it's been so missed, but here we are with the return of A Christmas Carol. Um, so with, without further ado, we'll jump into conversation, but I just want to say, Michael, I'm verklempt. Uh, my, my, you know, Mexican Jewish heart is smiling at all of our Christmas prep around this theater but specifically that Christmas Carol is back in our rooms. I can hear you all rehearsing from my office. So welcome back. I'm kind of spilling out of, of, of all the studios. I think we're in studio one, yes. we're in studio two, we take over conference rooms. There's, it's so thrilling to be back. It's, and it's so wonderful. Uh, everybody has been so welcoming. Um, the staff, new, old, there's such wonderful energy here at the theater, I feel like I've come back, come home at a very exciting time. And it's it's just wonderful to be with you, Millie and, and, and Cynthia and Zoe and the whole gang and our, our, our wonderful board and all the folks I run into in the community. I, I love Hartford, I, I love our, our theater um, and I'm, I'm thrilled that it's in such good hands and I'm, I couldn't be happier to be back. I'm so grateful. And, you know, I miss the story. I, I tell you, Christmas Carol is it's one of those stories that it really changes as you change, as you grow older, right. it grows older with you, which is nice. It's, it's something you don't have to ever put away. You know, Dickens always said he wanted it to haunt uh, your, our houses pleasantly. I and mean, may we never wish to lay it to rest. So, well, here we are. I mean, normally, you know, part of the goals, of, the goal of Seen and Heard is to let audiences in on why we've selected the plays we've selected, right? right? right. And just to say to all of you, this is going to be, we're doing actually two Seen and Heard's on Christmas Carol. This one is solo with Michael. And then make sure to also watch um, the one we're recording with three of our wonderful cast members. But I almost feel like, you know, I can throw to you and you're starting to answer the why of A Christmas Carol. And to even go back to when you first conceived of doing A Christmas Carol, it was your first year as artistic director, yes? First year, it was a centerpiece of the programming that year uh, because- 1998? 98, 99, which was the 35th anniversary season. So literally 25 years ago, it wow. doesn't seem possible, but- It doesn't. Um, but you were a child when you took over this theater, my friend. I, I was, which I think had, so, had certain virtues <laughs> <laughs> in terms of energy and naivete, but uh, it's nice to have seasoned leadership now. Oh, seasoned, I like that. Yes, I'm very seasoned. Um, so what was the impulse behind doing Christmas Carol at Hartford stage in the 98, 99 season? There were a number of impulses, but you know, uh, one first off among them was creating a, a, a story on stage that was universal, but also that would, would be for families. It, could, it, could, it was a story that families could enjoy together, that they could share the theater together. We had so much programming, uh, uh, under Mark and Paul before him and Jacques before him, you know, that really spoke to certainly our our, our adult uh, subscribers and patrons, but also our college and high school. But we didn't have very much that we're going to reach uh, down to the elementary school age, which this story right. actually can do. You can enjoy it from ages well, one to 92, they say in that one of those carols. But 
And we recommend with this version, since it's done in the Hartford stage aesthetic, age six to 99, shall we say. But um, we, and, and, and you know, Amelia, I, um, I'm, I'm thrilled that so many families did have come out. They did come out that first yeah. year. And, and, you know, we had a dream with David Carson, a, a People's Bank, who stepped up that first year to make the production possible with a significant gift, um, that it would be a, become a perennial for the community, a mainstay. But I don't think any of us had, you know, knew that it would be- it's 25 years, years, right? right? And and to say to all of you, we only, you know, we stopped um, in, right? We we were able to produce A Christmas Carol, my first season here, the winter of 2019, and then 2020, 2021, that odd global pandemic, I think is what we termed it, uh, uh, shut us down, made it impossible. And then for the next two years after that, just the health, the, both the financial risks involved and our concern um, about health and the size of the company and backstage. And so we're thrilled because um, we're really doing your Christmas Carol. I mean, this is not just to say to all of you, this is very much the production that's been on our stage for 20 years. I, I, except that we have so many new actors it's a okay. It, first of all, it's a company. Tell us about this production, Michael. Then it's forty-four actors, which is astounding, right? Ah. Now, among the forty-four actors, the kids are double cast, so you've got you've got to back them out. So let's say then it's you're only going to see thirty-two actors when you come and see the performance. Only, only. Oh. I mean, you know, and the children are are some of them have been in roles before. You know, you'll recognize some of the little kiddies, but a lot of them are new. All of the heart school students are new. There's 10 of them from the fourth year actor training and musical theater training programs there, the partnership between Hartford Right, so I go back one step because it is a cast of 44, but it's made up, I mean, there's mentorship, there's community within this company. That's so true. we have equity actors. There's 12 equity there's actors. Seasoned right. actors to use the term. Yes, and, and, and uh, among them, those 12 equity members, Eight of them, two thirds of them, are either new to the company or are in new roles. So, um, yes, it's going to be the same gorgeous design provided by Tony Award-winning Tony Stragus and lighting designer Robert Rizel, costume designer Alejo Vieta, and John Germana's uh, extraordinary uh, soundscape and score, and Hope Clark's uh, gorgeous choreography. Um, but there's going to be all these new players and it's been exciting given the rehearsal period that you and the theater afforded us, uh, Amelia, to, to go back and really stage it, direct it and act the story within an inch of its life as if this is the first time we're telling it and we're telling it with absolute urgency because we feel a sense of urgency in the world today. There's a lot that we would like to see um, better among, uh, among among our human race. And, um, you know, the Christmas Carol, Dickens, when he set out to write it, he really had as one of his big aims was to really instill joy in his readers. He literally believed that joy could be passed along and could be stoked in all of us. And it's been wonderful coming off COVID particularly when we are all in such isolation to really stoke the fires of joy and human connection and compassion and understanding. And it's really been very, very moving experience. Um, I read your program note from mm -hmm. the original program uh, of, you know, uh, Christmas of 1998. Um, and what moved me so much, I think it's it's you and I really have, I think, a shared dedication to the idea of community in this building, um, in this gorgeous theater, and that this is um, a civic institution. Yes. Because it is a place where hearing a story together and such a famous story and one that, as you say, is meant to infuse us with hope and joy 
for ourselves and for each other. And here we are creating a community of different ages. And then we also have the legacy of the communities who've seen this play over the last 25 years. Or who have performed it. So talk about that. Talk about, I mean, I, I will share that it was in that same program from 1998. And I'm not gonna, those of you watching, this is a quiz. This is a question for you. And I see many of you in our lobby and I want you to tell me what actor it is when you see me. But there is an actor featured prominently in the, in the, uh, in the program who is now playing a much older role because they have grown up within this production. So, right there's that and, and so so there's several people who've been with us with you with this show but just to even see how one actor has gone through very has gone through from one role to another within this production is just very moving we grow up within this show and and we have a young actor who was with us in 99 playing tiny tim who is now 24 years later our music director um we have another actor in the show who had just been born uh, when her mother was playing uh, a role in the production. And now she is on stage playing a role herself. After and, you know, and come and make sure you watch our companion scene in her to meet that actor. You'll, you'll meet her. About that. And, but, and there's even another actor who played Peter Cratchit uh, many, many years ago and who he really credits the show with, um, you know, really stoking his love of the theater and really pushing him to go not only into the theater, but into film arts. He both acts on stage and he makes movies. And now he's playing one of the principal roles in the equity company. And it's wonderful and astounding to have these, these folks, these talented young actors who were began as children, but, yeah. But you know, also, I, I think, yes, community is everything, I think, to Hartford Stage, in that the theater exists for the greater Hartford community. Um, Hartford Stage is one of those unique theaters that contributes to the national conversation about theater in terms of both the productions that it uh, develops here and then has sent to New York. But equally, if not more important, is the role Hartford Stage plays in the greater Hartford community and the partnerships and the alliances and the, the open doors that we um, have for all of the peoples that make up our wonderful city. And um, even though I don't live here anymore, I live in New York now after, since I left some years ago, um, I still have a, a digital subscription to the Hartford Current. I, I feel like I, you know, I still have a suitcase in Hartford, as yeah. Dietrich said. And, um, and you know, something, one of the things, you know, some people like to say, oh, Hartford, it's like that documentary that was on PBS. It's somewhere between Boston and New York. And they'll say that because it's not as big as Boston or New York. But there's also a wonderful virtue to that. This small, lovely New England city uh, is, is like the small town of what London would have been during Dickens' time in the mid 19th century. And the idea that this community is not rising to its full potential because of this man that has not joined the circle. Um, and, and then the journey of bringing him into the fold and what he does to transform the community. It reminds us all of our each of our own respective responsibilities to the community right. and the opportunity we have to give, to contribute. Um, I, I tell you, one of the, the big things that I've been really excited about, and at first I was alarmed by it, but is this idea of the Scrooge within us all. Because when I was a little kid, I used to think, oh, there's that mean ogre, he's the villain, and we're gonna try to bring him around to all of us good folks, right? Well. We're all Scrooge, right? We all really have are a Scrooge, but it's true. That's why the story speaks to us, right? It would be easy if it were just there's an other and that's the villain, but rather the it's story's just, about us. Right. And and the idea that there's a Scrooge within us all, well, 
first of all, it makes us understand him better, right? I've actually, I actually find myself defending him often. And it's amazing when I agree with him, like, why are these people always bothering and taking money off this desk? Right. Anyway, but the other thing is when Scrooge transforms, when he decides he's going to join the party and make a difference, he makes a big difference. He's not giving at the level of those solicitors that are trying to get money from him. He makes a huge gift because that's who that man is. He's someone that has enormous, right? Yes, he's enormous, enormous potential. power there and potential. Yes. And and I'm 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 very taken by his vitality. This wonderful actor, uh, Alan Gilmore, who is playing Scrooge for the first time this year. He will be our fourth Scrooge over 23 years. Of course, Bill Raymond was 18 years, Michael Preston, three years. Alan Davies played Scrooge when we performed Christmas Carol at the Bushnell to open the Belding Theater. Because Hartford Stage stepped in, you know, the Bushnell had built the theater, but they didn't have anything to uh -huh. put in it. Uh, you know, so we became the content that year and, and Bill was shooting something, so he wasn't with us. Um, we're blessed to have had these actors, particularly, of course, Bill for all those years. Um, but I'm I, I'm so excited to introduce Alan to our, to our community, and he, you know, is not only a wonderful classical actor whom I've seen in Shakespeare and trained at Juilliard. He has such an immense heart and soul, and it's just been a joy to create um, this journey with him and all the rest of the company. Where it's it's a great company. So tell right, and so we have we we have our equity actors. Yes. Tell us about Heart students. Tell us about University of Hartford and the Heart Theater Program. And really it's around Christmas Carol that this great relationship formed for Hartford Stage. It is, and, and you know, the partnership that Hartford Stage enjoys with the Heart School of, of a theater division um, is only one of two BFA programs in the country that are affiliated with a professional theater. The Guthrie has one and we have the other one. And what's fantastic is these, these young people, these young, wonderful artists that again, are pointing the way to the future and they bring their community into our community. Yeah. And we learn, I learned from them what's, you know, what's hip and what's exciting today. And they of course are learning from these seasoned professionals that are here. And we take the fourth year students, we take as, uh, uh, 10, almost the almost the entire class of actor training students. And we've got some of the musical theater training students. And here they are working with the Tony uh, Award nominated choreographer, Hope Clark, who was in the original company of West Side Story. And, right. you know, did, I mean, you know, it's a great opportunity for them. It's also wonderful how it regenerates Hartford Stage. Also, it's another prime example of the kind of partnerships that are, the theater enjoys throughout the community. and. And you know, I love it. It's I love having them there. I I I throw questions to them. I ask them. I I don't know. It's you know, I'm now the oldest man in the room. You know, <laughs> isn't it odd? This is very moving to me about rehearsals, right? We start out, you know, the young director, and then you look around, and 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 we're, but we're modeling a great thing, right? It's a great but, but, thing you know, to to be that. I still behave as if I'm was 33 i you know i i which i'm not sure that that's always good but uh well, what's a oh go ahead i didn't mean to no 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 i was just gonna say there's a kind of elfin energy that comes with doing christmas carol because uh -huh. i think it stirs the child in all of us but certainly it doesn't me i can't i can't do the play or, or direct it or stage it without having that kind of uh Childlike, mischievous, if, if well, you will. It, yes, yes. This is the joy of play, huh. right? This is the great privilege in our work is we get to play at work. What is your favorite right now? Like today, you had a full day of rehearsal. 
And what? No, what no. We had a production meeting, and then we had rehearsal. Then when I had an interview with Chris Arnott, and then yeah, Thank it's you, with Chris Arnott. Day. Thank you, Hartford Current. Um, yeah. we we appreciate um, all spreading uh, of the word of this wonderful production. What? All right. So this week, today yeah. is Thursday. You rehearse Tuesday, Wednesday. We take Mondays off in the theater. Um, but what's a highlight of rehearsals this week to share? What is something that happened in the rehearsal room that you can tell us about? Well, there's a couple things. Uh, uh, you know, one of the macro highlights would be uh, that Derek, our, our associate choreographer, he's been coming and working with the Hart School students and our dance captain, Sarah Killa, who was a graduate of the Hart School, who has joined the equity company over the years, was just recently in Tom Stoppard's Tony Award winning best play on Broadway this summer, member of that company. Um, you know, and she's joined by John Andrew Morrison, who played Mr. Marvel is now playing Christmas Present. He and is who's a uh, Tony nominee for Strange Loop. So we go. have we have some starry names back here at Hartford Stage. We, do. we I mean I mean and they love coming back to Hartford Stage. They've been coming back uh to to do this production and other productions through the years um because they love working here and so welcoming like our sponsors Bill and Judy Thompson who threw our welcome dinner. I mean it was just so lovely the end of that first week to be able to go to their beautiful home in West Hartford and know that we matter. Right. You know, the, the storytellers really matter and they, they're valued here, you know, and that was so great. But so- Something it, in the room. I want you to describe something that happened in the rehearsal room in the last week. I'm just gonna say that I'm gonna go to something small, which is Alan and I were talking about his transformation and how then he gets to then go towards the people and offer them a doctor for Tiny Tim, a raise for Bob Cratchit, money for the solicitors. But Alan asked this, said this wonderful thing. He said, but what about the man inside that's still hurting that hasn't healed yet? How do I, how do I heal that Scrooge within? Because I know I, I can do this, but Am I really transformed if I haven't forgiven myself? That's the kind of work that's going on in the hall and it's really um, inspiring. It, it, it really is a wonderful metaphor for us, right? I mean, this kind of story, because in a way I think we do, why we come to the theater, why I go to the theater is to see uh, as John Guare, I heard once say, it's to prepare us for the great moments in our lives. That's, That's what great. Art, That's a great quote. Right? And so you come to Christmas Carol and that question um, posed by an actor in the middle of trying to figure out the role is a question that we have to ask ourselves, right? And that Scrooge is in this sense a great example because the more you give, the more you get. I mean, psychologically proven, right? If you're depressed, reach out to others. If you feel you don't have enough, give more. It, it's a, it's, it's human behavior that Dickens captures. Yes, and when, you know, we go into a room and it's our job to lift up the, That's right. the storytellers. We, we lead them and we do that no matter what's going on inside of us, right? And partly I was sharing that with Alan is that the more you do that, the more it does, help the healing yeah. but you know that's a whole journey that's, that's all another journey of its own but it's wonderful to, to get to this level of detail and specificity and the and the dickens glorious story and we get to start next week a week from today yep. we'll be in the theater with our flying team with and flying yeah and they lost the fog machine in transit, ladies and gentlemen, but we are working on getting another fog machine. So we will oh, have heard that. <laughs> and did you know that this is the we go from from the 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 what is it? The divine <laughs> aspect of theater to the most quotidian friends. Dry ice is more expensive than it was four years ago. Five hundred and sixteen <laughs> times more expensive because as Brian Holcomb, our production manager, explained to us. In the meeting this morning, it's used to ice the vaccinations. Right. So, so we're dealing. This yeah. is. I mean, I really think the beauty of what we do, Michael. Right, is that we have the big questions, and that Dickens gives us this repository for these large questions about our mortality, our legacies, yep. 
our souls and and how to replenish ourselves and we also have to deal with making sure fedex finds that fog machine and we're holding both those ideas as we as we enter technical rehearsals i think most of you who've watched these know what technical rehearsals are since i i digress on this topic uh, quite frequently it is my favorite time because all of a sudden right michael you get lights there are costumes flying fog we hope dry ice we're getting it um we're scenery, not going to use too much right? straight tech because we know what it is and we're not going to spend the money we're going to like set it once for the kids and then I, that's multiply. right that's right yeah. well and this is what's interesting right i feel and just to congratulate you you're walking an interesting line this is you haven't directed this production in a number of years 10 years so you are now back <laughs> right for our 60th so folks i called michael uh over about a year ago right it's actually probably more than a year ago and i called and said so michael wilson amelia ben susan here you remember me we're, we're, we're good friends so i'm teasing um but will you come back for our 60th anniversary and helm your christmas carol and i and said yes immediately did that was a very happy call because, you know, as much as the community's missed it, I, I've missed it too. And I, yeah. you know what, I'm, I'm very, was very eager to be back here for this and so happy that I was invited. Well, come join us for Christmas, Carol. Michael, I'll let you get back to all the work all that right. lies ahead. Um, do join us for our, our, our companion scene and heard with a couple of the actors that Michael was just referring to. And uh, we'll see you at the theater, right? Can't wait. Thank you. Happy, happy, happy holidays. Happy holidays.